It's weird to grow up in a time when your mom and dad have to give you the police talk, or when a presidential election creates a racial divide. But it was 1968, the year I turned 12. 12 was the age I was gonna figure out what my bag was. I'd never be as popular as my sister, as smart as my mom, or as bad as my dad. But I decided what my bag would be. The Great Uniter. All right, now, The Wonder Years, the 2021 reboot, or just television series, is one of the new shows that I plan to review on this channel. Uh, kind of making way for my eventual change to our kind of entertainment. I'm going to be making those adjustments to the channel in the near future, hopefully by the end of the month. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to come up with a new banner for the uh, channel page and, you know, thinking what the new thumbnail should be aside from Hannah crying, but I'll figure it all out in due time. Now, yesterday I actually sat down and I didn't know they released like an official trailer, not like a 30 second teaser, but about a two and a half minute full trailer. And let me just say, after watching that trailer, I'm actually quite intrigued by the series because now I have a full understanding of what they're trying to do. And I, I know it's a touchy subject to, oh, you know, this is just another reboot and why are they making a black version of the Wonder Years? And trust and believe, I, well, you all know I'm black, but I love the original Wonder Years series. Now, what I'm thinking is after watching the full trailer, obviously I can't play the full thing, but I will leave a link to the entire trailer in the description below. I understand why it's called The Wonder Years. It's the fact that we're taking this journey into around, I believe, 1968. Uh, the Wonder Years is set in the late 1960s and takes a nostalgic look at the Williams family a black middle-class family made of residents of Montgomery, Alabama, through the point of view of imaginative 12-year-old imaginative Dean. And Don Cheadle is the freaking narrator, basically older Dean. And who doesn't love Don Cheadle? And I really loved it. I just feel, and it's not just because I'm black, but I feel like there's a good message in the show. I think that it looks well put together. And the fact that it's only 30 minute episodes, a.k.a. about 22 minutes, I can deal with that because it kind of, it's kind of like House of Pain and Assisted Living, you know, bite sized entertainment. I consider anything that's, you know, 30 minutes on television as bite sized compared to the hour long shows or 42 minute shows I review on a regular basis. And when I looked at the trailer, you know, I looked at it in its entirety. And I don't feel like there's a need of doing a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown. I'm just going to describe what was in the trailer. And it just seems like a wholesome show. I mean, I honestly uh, don't see too much harm in it my, myself, that is. Um, the series is going to kick off September 22nd, meaning it's going to be Wednesday at 8.30 on ABC. Now, we're going to be following this show through the eyes of Dean and... The <laughs> The trailer kicks off with Dean and his uh, friend, uh, Corey. They're on the school bus. And the Winnie Cooper of this series, I believe, is uh, Keisha Clemens. And she's the apple of Dean's eye. And, you know, him and uh, Corey are kind of talking about the situation. Wow, she's so cute and everything. Why don't you talk to her? So she goes to the back of the bus. There's this other boy that touches her. She doesn't like it and then puts him in a headlock until he apologizes. And, you know, we go from there. So this obviously, again, is in the late 60s. So um, Dean's narrator is talking about the fact that his parents had to talk about, you know, encounters with the cops and, you know, things regarding to the presidency. Honestly, it's kind of sad, but a lot of the discussions that were taking place in the 60s haven't really changed all that much in 2021 but this was in a time of integration and there were some moments in the trailer you know where dean and his um you know friends were just walking around the school drinking from the water fountain and these white students looked disgusted and walked the other way and we spent some time in the classroom you know dean dealing with bullies making fun of his glasses 
uh, you know, his friends are in the classroom and he's trying to be friendly with everybody. But Corey's like, hey, let's tone it down a bit. You know, let's not be black Jesus. Let's just take it slow, get to know these people and try to fit in. And there's a little girl who sits behind him. I could have sworn you could not tell me this wasn't like China Ann McLean when I first saw her. But she seems to be like a potential friend, maybe even love interest of Dean aside from Keisha. Uh, because he's like, oh yeah, you have glasses. My mom's making me wear pantyhose. And he's like, yuck, because she sits, sticks her legs out. And then the narration was like, whoa. <laughs> so I thought that was hilarious. So the thing about it is Dean is just turning 12 and he wants to find his place in the world. You know, basically his bag, so to speak. You know, his sister Kim is a popular cheerleader. Um, his mother... Lillian is smart and we see her a couple of times with a clipboard. I don't know. I think maybe she assists on the baseball team or something along those lines, but that's really all I could gather from the scenes. I really couldn't make the full breakdown or understanding what it is she does, but she's intelligent and his father, Bill, is a music professor. So really Dean wants to find out what he's good at, what he could be known for. And he wants to be the great uniter, basically forming an integrated baseball team between white and black players. So really, you know, his parents are like, wait, why do you want to do that? And it's like, well, you know, me, my friends, uh, Corey, who's black, and Brad, who's white, you know, they're best friends. They don't really see color. They see just friendship. So why can't we play together? And that seems to be the overarching, overarching storyline of this series you know, Dean trying to bridge the gap between white and black and just playing baseball. So I honestly think this show could be pretty dang good. Now, I get it. People who love the original Wonder Years who aren't me feel like, you know, oh, wow, we really just got to not whitewash, but blackwash this show. It was fine the way it was. I want to watch this show. And remember that the original Wonder Years won't be quote-unquote tainted by this. Basically, it's a show called The Wonder Years, but it's focused on a black family. It's just like, well, The Wonder Years was about a white family. I mean, The Wizard of Oz was white characters. And then there was another one made called The Wiz, which was black characters. So, I'm just going to leave it pretty much at that. I just hope that the show has, you know, like the rights to music and whatnot, like the original, because one of my favorite aspects of the original Wonder Years was the use of classic songs, especially during certain moments. What becomes of a broken heart? You are everything. Yeah, there were some classic black tracks in the Wonder Years. Don't get it twisted. So I hope that in this Wonder Years, especially with uh, Dean's father being a music professor, we have some great music. I feel like the music really made the Wonder Years great. And I hope it has the same aspect here. But considering that um, Lee Daniels is involved and, you know, Fred Savage, who was obviously Kevin in the original Wonder Years. I, I think they're going to do right by this series. That's that's what I think. Because honestly, when it was first introduced, it was, or excuse me, first announced they were doing a Black Wonder Years it definitely felt like it was pandering given the George Floyd Black Lives Matter movement of 2020. So it was like, yeah, let's go ahead and, you know, make a black show to say, hey, the ABC's cool with black people. Or, you know, last night, I, I, I didn't watch the Emmys. I just, um, I just scrolled online this morning when I woke up and apparently, despite a record-breaking amount of black nominees... <laughs> No black people won. Look, I could be wrong. I was scrolling and that's what I saw. There were some black individuals who won. Let me know. But based on what I saw, people were pissed off. Mainly people who thought WandaVision was going to win. Honestly, I was rooting for WandaVision, but whatever. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you going to give this new Wonder Years a chance? I, I definitely am. Like I said, it's only like 30 minute episodes and I just hope it tells a good story. Based on it, the preview, I think is going to be good. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, guys. Well, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I looked at the comments on the video I posted yesterday about the Bel Air reboot casting. And a lot of people said the same thing. 
man, Hollywood is out of creative ideas. It's always rebooting instead of coming up with something original. And, you, you know, the argument could be made that the Wonder Years could have just been called something else. But I think it captures the spirit of the original Wonder Years. It's just, well, a black family. So, there we go. It's just like if there was a Andy Griffith show, but black people. Honestly, I don't even know how that would work, but I don't know. They'll find a way. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, when I post a review, hope you support it. You know, just look at it, see what my thoughts are, and we'll go from there. Talk to you all in the next one.